Saul Tarvitz, the Emperor's Children Captain. Fuck that up already. Saul Tarvitz, Captain of the Emperor's Children, the first Loyalist. Why is he named the first Loyalist? Well, it's because he literally was the first Loyalist ever named in the Horus Heresy series. You realize you are preaching mutiny, Brother Captain Tarvitz nodded gravely. Betray Horus or betray the Emperor. What choice is there? How do you nod gravely? Anyway, uh, so that's an excerpt taken from 1988's Space Marine box set. So this is an ancient, ancient game in Games Workshop's library. And this was the first time that they talked about the Horus Heresy. Uh, and this is, uh, well, the the... the Result, Sol Tarvitz, the Marine that we see in front of us. I mean, this is the thing that kicked off the Return to Istvan challenge. We were all bored in first lockdown, wondering what the hell we should do to entertain ourselves. This propped up, oh brilliant, okay, let's all do Istvan 3 again. And weirdly enough, next year it's the 10 year anniversary of that book. So it coincides quite nicely with this challenge, with this whatever the hell this thing is that we're doing. Um, I knew this miniature is special to any Horus Heresy fan. I want to do something as equally as distinctive for the Tutorial Masterclass series uh, via the Patreon. Plug, plug, plug. Uh, Tarvitz has been painted in two ways, in a grimdark style and, in my personal preference, a volumetric highlight. But what, what on earth does that mean? So when we look at volumetric highlighting, it's a style that best emphasises the shape of the miniature in relation to light and shadow. Uh, the lower shin is a perfect example of this. By using techniques normally reserved for 2D art, we can give greater expression to the sculpt, adding depth to shapes. It's also a really nice methodology to apply to curved surfaces that you may not readily know where to place, say, an edge highlight to. Uh, Games Workshop style of painting uh, doesn't only use edge highlighting, but it is predom predominant with space miniatures. And I knew when I was exploring different painting techniques and styles that I always had a hard time considering where to add that head edge highlight on a shoulder pol pauldron, a domed surface, or any naturalistic leathers or sweeps or uh, any folds. Because, I mean, nature doesn't lend itself to edge highlighting. When you look around you, very few things have that straight edge to it. Uh, but I feel like I'm getting off topic here. By using techniques normally reserved for 2D art, uh, we can give greater expression to these sculpts, adding depth to the shapes. Curving the brush in line with the volumes or the shapes, the choice of brush stroke, this allows us to tell different stories. Should we use a wide variety of hues and values, for example? Uh, value simply means the lightness or darkness of a colour. Uh, if we add a varied uh, hue range, so if we add blues in the shadows, magenta in the midtones, and light skin tones in the highlight, we can suggest a lacquered armor, as opposed to just using a flat base coat of purple, highlighted maybe a lighter pink, and that would suggest a duller surface because the light doesn't reflect as coherently from it. Uh, if we add choppy, immediate stipples, we create a battle-worn appearance. Volumetric highlighting does give a better platform, especially on social media, especially viewing photos of it, uh, to, to see the miniature, I guess, in greater depth. It's that snapshot, it's that nice blended technique, that no, nice painterly techniques that you can show off with, with a miniature. And, okay, grim dark painting. Whew, what a topic to tackle. Uh, it's because it means so many different things to so many different people. You ask one person what Grimdark is, they may mention it's the heavy use of oils and enamels. You ask another, it's the limited palette. Ask another person, I hate edge highlighting, so I've done it in Grimdark style. Uh, it's a subjective term. I prefer to think of it as a realistic approach, as a way to wrap my own head around it. Uh, okay, so if you have, th the way I view this, if you have the misfortune to step into this world, this horrid 31st millennium, and you look up and you see a space marine, the miniature that we paint should be as close a representation as the as looking at that, that, that space marine should be. It's seeing the character without a filter. So we aren't employing those nice painterly techniques that we can show off, and, and uh, yeah, j j just show off the technique we've developed. No, this is much more gra- For the base, we take good old Rhinoxide, 
one of my indispensable colors. We need to glaze this down. We add, ooh, for every point of paint, one part of water, so one to one. And after we've added sand, we just want to lightly dapple it on top. And this goes across the entirety of the base to give us a good foundation uh, for any dry brushing and weathering powder that we will apply. Okay, let's sort this base out, shall we? Uh, what I want to do to begin with is take some uh, Sol Yellow, take some light flesh, really unusual colors, right? A pinch of black to create this weird yellowish gray. And uh, I don't want to use a good brush for this. I want to use an old knackered brush and I'll add a few stipples into the center of the skull's head and I'll let uh, I guess the aim, I, I need to struggle a little bit here um, because the the way we use the brush it will kind of splay out I take a pinch of white try a highlight within that the whole skull Done. How easy was that? Okay, you take a pinch of green next. Boreal green. Pinch of white. Tiniest, tiniest pinch of black. To create a greyish green. Swipe the brush down to give the impression of raindrops and, and uh, all manner of horribleness that's descended on the surface. Let's take a pinch of yellow, add the occasional sweep here and there. And that's all I want to do to the base at this particular time. The rest of the job will be done with weather and powder. Okay, let's finish up the base, shall we? Dark European Earth by Wilder Products. Uh, I love this weathering powder to represent the fields of Istvan 3 because it's slightly lighter than that top coat that we have. So I'm just going to apply it uh, dry to begin with. And then let's take some water, mash it on there. Always remember when working with weathering powder, it always comes out slightly darker. So even if you're using slightly lighter pigments, uh, don't worry, they won't stay like that for long. Okay, let's take some of this, add water to it, and work it on drips and drafts. Another thing I can do as it is drying, I can take uh, bone dust. Actually, that's not you bone dust because I don't believe you could get it anymore. So instead, let's use street dust by Wilder. And again, I just want to add the occasional droplet, especially around the fallen masonry to represent, uh, well, fallen masonry. What I can do as well, display of the brus bristles. Apply it to the base of his cloak as mud spatter. Okay, let's have a pinch more water. Spread that out. Another thing we can do is apply a very small layer over the base of his foot. Now, I, we need a minimal amount. I don't want much splashing up on his armor. Okay, let's see how that dries and we'll reassess. Using a tasteful amount of blood splattered onto the surface of the miniature, uh, we can say it is now done. We can say that the stylistic version of Soul Tarvitz is now complete. We do, however, need to add a few extras to the weathered version. 
you would like to see the full 4K video tutorial on this Masterclass series, head over to Patreon. There's a link below in the description. Uh, you can sign up for $15, which is like 13 quid, and you get access to not only this month's tutorials. No, 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 no. You get access to everything that came previous to this. You get a library's worth of PDF videos and seminars right at your fingertips. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there.